Good afternoon, everyone. I am incredibly honored to be able to commence the inaugural event of the Mira Knowledge Series, an initiative by our institution for the collective growth of knowledge, furthering society and evolution all together. We here at Bite Nights and MMS believe in education as a facilitator for growth in society. Hence, why we have launched this series, where we plan to host a variety of such events in order, order to globalize our aim. We want education to be the forefront, to be the positive of future leaders, and hence why I am incredibly proud to be the first one to declare its commencement with a great quote by Wendell Wit: "Education is the mother of leadership." Now on to Sathut. Sagnik. Uh, Sagnik, I think you need to carry on from now. Sagnik from Aditya Academy. Sagnik is here. Sagnik. <laughs> All of you are requested to please turn on your cameras. Is it so? Are you visible? Oh. Yes, you are visible. Yeah, please, please. I think my uh, speaker was muted. Uh, Ma'am, if you are saying something. I think Sagnik has to carry on from here. Uh, yes, sir. So, okay, uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, I am Shadi Sharkar. I am the uh, IT in charge. And along me, uh, Ribu Shah is here. He is also the IT in charge of the club. And so, uh, we are over here, like, uh, we are having our team IP, uh, that is a team B and team A as well. Uh, so, they are uh, team from team A, there is Moina. Rajrishi, Rajarshi, and Adranil is also there, and uh, Anushka is also there. And from team uh, B, we are having uh, Shobhi, Moyu, uh, Riddhiman, and Samadhi. Okay, so uh, there is a small presentation from our school, like our school's video. So I am presenting it. One second. There is no audio from your side. Please keep your mic mute. Oh, 
all schools are doing their bit. Yes, sir. We are done with our school's video. So, uh, one more thing, like from our school, we are the first one. Like, uh, we have made our uh, school's web magazine, so we can also view it for you. I am uh, sharing it. This is our school's uh, web magazine. Our ch chairman, our vice chairman, managing uh, director, uh, our honorable uh, director, and our senior principal. So these are all. And we are having our creative corner as well, from where like uh, there are many articles uh, our students uh, have uh, wrote up, and there are stories as well. So these are the few write-ups uh, from our students, and uh, there are other as well, like uh, Next, uh, these are the wrote-ups from uh, uh, children, small children. You can go to our the, this website and check it out. Okay. Hello, sir. Are we visible, right? An audible. Oh, yeah. It's visible and audible both. Okay, fine. And there are other club activities. We are from our school. We are having uh, six uh, clubs, uh, seven clubs: uh, our tech club, our film and dramatics club, our sports club, our uh, culture and creative club, our community club. And here, over here, it is eco and innovation. Uh, over here, we are having a literary club as well. And there are a few uh, mazes like. Hello, all mics are off. Uh, we have uh, went to few orph orphanages and uh, old age home over there. There are a few uh, pics. These are the summer camps. Uh, we are, we uh, every year we are having a summer camp in our school. So for that we are having all these activities. These are the yoga dhyan. Our uh, sports club. Our teachers' day celebrations and all. Our maths exhibition. Our summer camp pictures. So these are all. And for uh, uh, now, I'm handing over to uh, Rishwana Ma'am, and Rishwana Ma'am will continue. Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, uh, I would like to thank Sonali Ma'am and Nashwana Paul Sir to arrange such a nice event for us. It's uh, really, really very much motivating for the students. Uh, and definitely, I would like to thank all the students of Mira School and my own school, Vatita Academy, for participation. We are working, we have worked very hard. I have seen, like, at least my students, they have arranged everything. Uh, they have worked hard after it. And definitely, this is very much motivating for the junior students also. Once they will get to know that such an event has been arranged by school. And uh, once we show them like uh, what not they have done, so definitely it is going to give them a very big motivation. Thanking you, all of you. I'm thankful to everybody, especially to Sonali ma'am. Uh, I'd like to, all of us would like to, Listen to her. So, a few words for her, ma'am, please. So, nice. A very good afternoon to all present here, teachers and dear students. Um, I convey my re uh, respect to the principal of Mira Model School. Um, we at Aditya Academy, we are indeed very glad and honored to be a part of this unique initiative of Mira Model School. 
This session itself is a best example of an innovative way of learning from each other, sharing knowledge in a collaborative manner and creating a global learning community. Students, you belong to the 21st century and it is important to learn the skill sets needed for your future. The world is changing faster than ever before. You need to prepare yourself for the jobs that you do not that do not even exist. There is a paradigm shift in the teaching learning process that goes beyond teaching students how to answer. Instead, teaching them how to ask the right questions, evaluate information critically, and communicate effectively. I convey my best wishes to the in charges of the tech club of both Mira Model School and Aditya Academy Senior Secondary for this competition. Uh, before I conclude, I must thank my friend Mr. Rajkumar Pal for collaborating with us and for this initiative in the successful conduct of this session. All the best to all the teams. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Sonali, ma'am. Thank you, Rituparna, ma'am. And thank you, Aditya Academy students and teachers who have worked behind it. And good afternoon, all of you. To begin with, uh, I extend a warm welcome to all the participants of our school and Aditya Academy School. This particular event is a long, uh, you know, dreamt of. I had a dream long ago that to have a collaborative event on the cognitive part of the curriculum, I think uh, it has turned into reality. This is the first episode. We have, uh, you know, thought of a plan where we can have interaction with various schools on various topics at various levels from 6 to 12th. So main objective is that everybody learns in a collective way. That is the main objective. So now uh, I would like to invite our deputy head, Ms. Minakshi Sant, to address all of us. Good afternoon. Education's purpose is to replace an empty mind with an open one, said Malcolm Forbes. Good afternoon. I'm extremely honored to welcome the principal of uh, Aditya Academy Senior School, Kolkata, Ms. Sonali Sarkar, Head of Department Computer Science, Ms. Rituparna Banerjee. It was just a short time ago that I was in Calcutta and uh, the woman sir told me I had beautiful memories of my own when I was a young girl. I studied at Ashoka Hall uh, and now technology makes it possible for us to have an interaction with schools across the country. I would have never ever thought that this was possible when I was a young girl. But here we are on the first of uh, the Nodded series in our 50th year of uh, Mira Model School uh, in our Nodded series. And what a wonderful opportunity to start with Kolkata and with a school uh, that is so well known in Kolkata. Um, I uh, would like to second what uh, Principal Ma'am uh, Sonali Sarkar said and uh, she was talking about uh, 21st century skills that are so necessary. We need to go beyond our textbooks and develop skills that relate to creativity, that lead to digital literacy and of course uh, to working across teams and uh, also uh, having global citizenship values. And this series is an excellent way to inculcate all these. And uh, as uh, Benjamin Franklin said, that the investment in knowledge is the best investment because it pays interest all through your life. So I congratulate our erudite young students. I uh, congratulate our learned teachers and our dynamic principal, Ms. Sonali Sarkar, for supporting such a wonderful initiative. And I end by lines from uh, Albert Einstein. And he said, education remains after one has forgotten 
what one has learned in school. And I'm sure this is an event that will stay in the minds of our students long after they have passed out of school. Thank you so much. Thank you, Minakshi, ma'am, for your words of wisdom. Now, uh, I would like to uh, hand over the mic to Thea, who will be taking you through this event. So, all the best to both the schools, and I hope you will have a very good learning session. Thea. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon to all here convened. I, Thea Girotra, a member of White Knights and a proud student of Mira Model School, am here to host the premier Mira Knowledge Series event, a collaboration between our school, Mira Model, and Aditya Academy. This esteemed competition aims at the universalization of education and predominantly knowledge and skills, hence the name, as iterated by Ratsar as well. And now I will be providing you with a reiteration of the rules. Kindly listen carefully. Each team has four to five participants, with the broad subject being the computer sciences, with individual topics allotted to teams. The time given to each team is 10 to 15 minutes, and the judging criterion are on the basis of the presentation, confidence, content mastery, and the responses that you will be providing to the judges' questions. I will just repeat the judging criterion for all of you. You will have you will be judged on the basis of your presentation, your confidence, your content mastery, and the answers that you provide to the judges' questions. Now, I would just like to start with the first team of Mira Modern School on the subject of computer sciences and the topic list and dictionary in Python being the main topic. Now, when I call out your name, team members, please raise your hand so that you may be easily identified. Chitanya Palta, Tanesh Varma, Pranitha Tanikela, Pranapreet Singh, and Kashi Arora. Okay, members, good luck. May the force be with you. Good morning all the respected teachers and our fellow mates. Today, we, TA, have decided to come up with the agenda of understanding about lists and dictionaries in Python with their methods. So now our first topic is this. What is this? It is an order and a mutable data structure which is used to store heterogeneous data in Python. It is used it is used to store it is used to store strings and integers and multiple other heterogeneous data. It is normally written in square brackets. Now let's talk about indexing and slicing. Indexing in the list begins with zero, and if we want to index the list from n, it will be minus one. Concerning the example given below, if we write n Square bracket zero, India will be printed. Change in item value. Here we have given an example of a list containing numbers from one to five. I want to change the uh, third level, uh, third index number with apple. So here is the output. To check if the item exists, to get in mind if a specified item is present in a list, we use the in keyword. In keyword is basically used to find any value in the sequence or a list. Now, example, check if Apple is present in the list, we put if Apple in A, print yes, Apple is in the food list. Using of list length, to better mind how many items are there in the list, we use the len function. Len function basically helps us to better mind how many elements are there in a list. Traversing list. Traversing through a list can be done using for loop. Here's an example in front of you. Copying in a list. Copying in a list can be done by two methods, shallow copy and deep copy. For example, if I have a sample list L1 with elements 1, 2, 3, and 4, and I write L2 is equal to L1, L2 would be nothing more than a mere reference to L1. It would have the same elements, but they, it would change as L2 is changing. However, in deep copy, we use the method dot copy with code L2 is equal to L1 dot copy to obtain all the elements within the list. 
in 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 salo copy the id remains same however in deep copy the id changes this is the biggest difference between them. in order to join two list so how can we join two list in python considering there is a list 1 let us say l1 and list 2 l2 in order to join two list we use the property of concatenation and plus operator so if you have to create a new list l3 we would write l1 plus l2 in this the product will be 1 2 3 and 4 5 6 in order to change the order of the l3 we would write l2 plus l1 in that case 4 5 6 will be printed before 1 2 3 next list a list list is a list that appears as an element in another list suppose a list there is a list a so there is another list in that whole list that is known as listed list listed function these are the pre existing functions in list first is len len is used to find the number of items in a list if list Function is used to create an empty list or change the data type of a sequence into a list. Sorted is used to return a sorted list. Uh, by default, it is in descending order, but for but for ascending, we use reverse is equal to two. For min, to return the minimum value from the list, and similarly, we use the maximum function to return the maximum value. Sum. It's a mathematical operator used to sum all the values in the list. Talking about some list methods, Python has a set of built-in methods that we can use in list. But now I would like to tell you the difference between method and function. Function is basically a part of model, whereas method is a function only which has a specific class. Starting from the first list method, which is append, it adds an element at the end of the list. Clear? It removes all the elements from the list. Through clear, we can also create an empty list. Copy? It returns as the copy of a list. And count it returns the number of elements specified with the values. Now we have extend method. Extend can also add elements to the end of the list. But what is the main difference between append and extend? Append can add one individual element to the end of the list, while the extend can add multiple individual elements to the end of the list. Index. It is a method which can give which can give us the index of the first string occurrence of the value which is specified by our user. Insert. It can add an element to the list according to the index which is specified by the user. In this, the index will be specified, but not the value. For it deletes the element from the list again according to the index which will be specified by the user. Remove again it deletes the element from the list, but it is according to the value which will be specified by the user. Pop and pop and remove. There is a difference between both of these. Pop will show the element which is deleted, but remove will not show the element which is deleted. Reverse it can reverse the list, and it also reverses the index values of the individual elements which are present in the list. Now we are going to talk about dictionaries. Dictionaries, a uh, dictionary is a key value pair. Dictionary is an unordered collection of items. Each key is separated by a colon. Items are separated by commas, or the whole thing may be in, is may not may be, but enclosed in curly braces. Here is an example of dictionary. Now, properties of dictionaries. Keys are unique. And uh, and keys can only be immutable data types such as strings, tuples, or integers. But on the other hand, value may or may not be unique and can be any data type. Keys will be a single element, while values can be lists or nested lists. More than one entry per key is not allowed in a dictionary. To obtain a value from a key, now there are two methods to obtain a value from a key. In first, we specify the key from which we want the value, and the second, the get method. Through which we, when we specify the key, they will the Python will compile us the value. Means value for a key, we just specify the value we wish to assign with the name of the dictionary and the key we wish to replace with it. If if no no such key exists in the dictionary, it automatically creates a new key and a value pair. To traverse through a dictionary, we can use for loop. When using for loop, we the Uh, itinerary object moves through the keys of the dictionary. We can also use the uh, uh, d dot values to, to get the values list. Dictionary length to determine how many items key value pairs are in a dictionary. We use the length function. You can see a sample syntax as given. To add items, we 
to as we up, update in a dictionary however they are different if no key no key already exists in the dictionary remove items there are four methods to remove items in a dictionary first is the pop it removes the item with a specified key but when we talk about pop item method it removes the last inserted item is removed the tail keyword removes the item with a specified key and the clear method empties the dictionary copying a dictionary we cannot just copy a dictionary by simply typing d2 is equal to d1 because d2 will become a reference of d1 so if i make changes in d1 automatic the changes will be automatically made in d2 also so there are methods to copy dictionaries the first method the first is the copy method uh, here we link the we link the given dictionary with the copy method and a new dictionary is created which is a copy of the older one and the other way to copy uh, and the another way to copy a dictionary is using dict function here you can see how it works basic functions in dictionary these are the three existed functions in dictionary first is the length to find the number of items in a dictionary then to create an empty dictionary we use the icp function then to sort it to return a sorted list of keys we use sorted and similarly min and max is used to return minimum key from the dictionary and maximum key from the dictionary respectively and this sum is the mathematical operator used to return the sum of all the keys in the dictionary now dictionary methods clear removes all the elements from the dictionary creating an empty dictionary copy it returns a copy of the dictionary get uh, returns the value of a specified key by the user item it returns a list containing a tuple for each key value pair keys returns a list of contain returns a list containing the dictionary's keys pop removes the element with a specified key pop item removes whichever the last key value pair is set default sets the value for a specified key if the key does not exist yet it will insert the key and set the default value update updates the dictionary and just like the previous one if key value pair does not exist it will create one and values returns a list of all the values from the dictionary now dictionary and lists have practical uses too dictionary is used with databases uh, the primary key in databases can be used as the key in dictionary and lists has properties of storing heterogeneous collection of data like strings other lists tuples integers etc etc thank you thank you for listening so patiently thank you team your time used was 10 and a half minutes now on to the first team of aditya academy on the subject of computer sciences and the same topic as the previous team which is list and dictionary in python now when i call out your name team members please raise your hands so that you may be easily identified abhranil mukherjee anushka roy manik uh, manak das gupta and rajarshi roy thank you team you may begin good luck all right ma'am uh, thank you so uh, let us share the presentation so hopefully you can see our presentation uh, let's begin okay so uh, i would like to begin uh, with the introduction so we all know that uh, coding is a uh, very it's is a it's considered a very difficult task and complex task and it is a highly acclaimed job in india with the advancing with the advancing of technology we have heavily become software oriented from buying groceries to buying apartments and to make things easier Uh, we have python which is a high level programming language which has been developed uh, which can be used to uh, apply in numerous daily applications and 
So our entire project is based on these applications. We have so, some examples uh, where we have certain applications, and then we have the uh, uh, functions and other properties which we use instead. So. First of all, we need to understand what is a data structure. A data structure is a specialized format for reorganizing, processing, retrieving, and storing data. Now let us a deep now let us take a deep dive into the two common data structures of Python, lists and dictionaries. As the name suggests, list uh, is used in our in used in various uh, purposes. From in our daily life, we uh, use to do lists or we make a grocery list. And in Python, we do the same. We mainly use it to list items. Uh, it is a collection of data, and uh, it has uh, and it is the most basic thing we learn when we start with Python. Thank you, Anushka. So uh, let us take a deep dive into lists now. So and uh, so introducing lists. Lists means for definition, they are used to store multiple items or multiple um, or we can say elements in a computer. And these all the all these elements are stored in a list, which is which is contained in a particular variables. They can have multiple data types. They can store multiple data types. They can be nested, etc. So let us take a deep dive into the various functions uh, that we can operate on a list. Okay, so let's go. So introducing the most basic function that we can be uh, that we should be able to do with any type of list is count how many elements in it are in it so in python we do that by using a particular function called the len function it is a function which basically lets us count the total number of elements that are present in a certain list then we can use indexing or slicing this is basically uh, specifying to the computer particular parts of a list or particular elements of a list that we would like to operate on. These are done by using square brackets and uh, writing uh, the index number of particular element of a list within it. And another uh, um, very important function of a list, especially a numerical list, is the min and max function. This basically returns the minimum or the maximum values in a list. Okay. So, can we have an example with uh, these three functions? Yeah, so to better understand these three functions, let us uh, take a real life example of a certain problem and see what Python and lists can do for us. So, beginning, if we are uh, in the stock market and there are stock prices, okay, for different days, we would like to know that the maximum profit we can make by buying or selling a stock just once, right? So let's go. For example, we have uh, a list with numbers which are which basically represents prices of stocks on different days, right? Day one, like day one, day two, day three, till the day nth day. And our goal is to find the maximum profit we can have by buying and selling it once. So what do we uh, do? We just perform a few simple operations on list, and Python can do that for us. Let's go. So. Uh, if we give the list of prices to Python it, uh, and uh, run a certain algorithm on it, it will iterate through every item of the list and give us the maximum profit and uh, uh, means the maximum profit recorded here and the current profit that we can have by uh, basically selling a stock on that day. As we can see, when uh, Python iterates through, the, through this list, it uh, goes through 214 on the first day we can't have any profit and then it goes to 332 on that day we can have a profit of 118 max and so on 108 uh, means the maximum profit on the uh, the profit on the next day will be 40 and the maximum will be 180 and so on uh, the maximum uh, once it has iterated through all uh, through the whole list it will give us the maximum profit we can have so we can apply uh, means lists in uh, example for stock markets uh, in in this particular example and we can use that len indexing slicing and min max uh, function particularly to get the maximum profit we can have so moving on, let us see a few more uh, means, uh, properties of a list. So a list can be in dimension, meaning it can have lists within it, embedded within it, right? Like a matrix. Matrix is uh, two dimension, right? So a list can all be also be two dimensional. And the, one of the most important functions of a property of a list is that it is iterable. 
which is which means that we can iterate through each of the elements and we can process them right and the last function for this example is sorting this is a very important function because so list dot sort it is it is a function which lets us sort a particular list in any way we are so let us say, see an example so for example we are trapped in a building right and there are for example say three exits in that building and uh, people are injured uh, so we can arrange them on the means on how critical their condition is and treat them uh, means treat those queue as lists Okay, so five is the most critical in this case. Zero is the least critical, right? And there are, for example, three doors, and people have to exit out of the building. So we can apply a Python to efficiently sort those people and get those out first who need who need help the most, right? And once we do that, see, Python can sort it in means Python can show us the way to sort it in the most efficient uh, way and in the fastest time possible. to give us uh, a means the most efficient way to evacuate those people out of the building so this is another useful uh, we can say example where we can apply lists in a real life situation situation so uh moving on for example there is a wrong question right uh, it it often happens right there is a wrong question in the question paper and uh, we have to give marks for it so what we can basically do is we can specify those who have attempted the wrong question because if they have attempted and the question is wrong then we can we have to give them marks but we can uh, means doing it manually takes a lot of time right so python can basically iterate through all of those uh, people in a list and see so we will have the initial marks and a list of those who have attempted or not attempted see this here is a boolean example a different data type in a list whether one has attempted or not attempted and comparing this two yeah, lists to python can basically assign marks to those who have attempted the wrong question this is a very practical scenario real life but python makes it easier for us to handle this right so uh, in the initial marks is for example 15 and the student student has attempted the wrong question so his marks will be increased to 70 next the initial marks is 7 and attempted uh, he has not attempted so it will not be increased and like this python can do the rest of the work the uh, rest of the work for us with lists okay and this is the code uh, if anybody wants to see hey anyway. now uh, going to the next type of uh, data type which is dictionaries so i would like uh, anushka to give a brief introduction to dictionaries so uh, what do we understand when we hear the term dictionary uh the first thing that comes to our mind is that a word and it has a specified meaning in the same way python dictionary also works in the uh, same manner i mean that every uh, key has a value assigned to it that means a dictionary in python is a key value pair and uh, we can access the value using the keys moina yeah so uh, you are now right now you are introduced to the concept of dictionary let me give a few functions or a few properties that it has which we can use right so uh let's see okay so the main property of a dictionary is that it has a key value relation right there is a key and there is a value assigned to it and a dictionary has a very useful function which is also the get function it uh, lets us know if a particular element is present in that list right and uh, another most important function of a dictionary and this is also a function of uh, property of a list that it is mutable right so we can basically change the values of a dictionaries in place we do not have to make a new list a new dictionary itself. so using this three uh, basic properties key value relation the get function and mutability let us see a real life example okay so for example we are in a library right the books are catalog so that can be done using dictionaries how let's see for example we assign a particular key value zero to a name lord of the rings for example book for example one someone has taken the book so we assign the value of none and like this so on we can basically do a database system where each book has a certain key and we can refer to the book through that key right and so for example we have this is the original catalog and if we input an id number 2 we will see whether the book is present or not if it is present then we will update the dictionary catalog right we will remove that book and if it is not present we can say the book is not in the library so this is a very real life example exploring the three most basic functions of dictionary 
So this can be very helpful in our common library, right? Yes, exactly. Our school exactly. libraries or our public libraries. Exactly. So that means Python can be used anywhere, from from uh, evacuation uh, plans to libraries. Okay. So let's see a few more. Append. We can append to a dictionary, and uh, the hash map concept. We can do key indexing, which is basically indexing the uh, various elements of a dictionary. We can access the elements by indexing. For example, the zeroth element, the first element, the second element. Let us see an example for that. The ice cream problem. For example, you have gone to the ice cream shop. Okay, and you have eight dollars, and uh, we we have different prices of ice cream, and you want to optimize, right? So what you can do is you can go through each of the ice cream prices. For example, one, three, two, and you can store the required price that you need for for a future for future reference. So that, uh, for example, one the required price is price is seven. Okay, six the required price is two if we have eight dollars. And by that Python can basically go iterate through each of the uh, through the list and create a dictionary format. For how much money we have and how much we need for each ice cream, and uh, thus when we come to the fourth value, it says that two we have passed two already. So dictionary can also help us to means identify the best possible options in a given situation. Uh, means where we have to choose uh, the best possible uh, option for us, uh, which is the means most uh, value we can see. So this is a program which involves both list and dictionary, right, Moina? Yes, exactly. So this is an integrated program which uh, means where Python uses lists and dictionaries to help us find out uh, means the best option for us at an ice cream shop somewhere we often means very frequently visit. And next is the last one, the nested data type. So dictionaries can also have nested dictionaries within or nested lists within it. Let's, for example, in a hotel desk. Okay, there are various. Um, we can say uh, in a hotel desk locker there are various names right and for example this is a parcel locker and yes sir so a b c d for example my friend abronil here uh, st uh, is staying at a hotel and he goes to the hotel desk to see if there is any parcels for him so there uh, the parcels are stored in a dictionary format with their names and the initials of their names and once he goes to ask for his parcel the computer uh, python rather can search whether his initial and his name is present and can show whether there are any parcels for him so this is also another very real life example of how you we can we can use dictionary for example we input my name moinak and uh, we use the get function to see whether my name is present okay uh, in the uh, locker and According to that, if the, I have any parcel, see it is going to the uh, leftmost corner due to the uh, according to the algorithm. If I give my name in the input, and Python can use dictionary to say that yes, I have a parcel present in state, and we use the get function for that, which basically checks if a particular element is present in it. So now we are uh, over with uh, most of the functions of dictionaries and uh, lists, right? So I would like to uh, go forward and. Uh, conclude this. So, with, uh, now over to my friend Rajesh. So, with that, our presentation comes to an end. We can clearly see the vast impact that Python as a programming language has in our lives. It not only solves problems, but also makes our lives a lot easier too. By performing tasks automatically and quickly, which would otherwise take us a long time to do, and Python does it all without flaw. Although that depends on the program, obviously. We can also solve problems like selling stocks at the highest price, storing data efficiently using keys and values, as in dictionary. And that's all. Thank you. Now uh, we would like to end this uh, presentation. So let me stop sharing my screen. Thank you. Okay, so we are done with uh, our presentation from team. Second uh, team. Eight. And of us, please raise so that you may be easily identified. Uh, the three are. Video, video. Video, video.
So when I call out your name, team members of Aditya Academy, please raise your hand so that you may be easily identified. We have Mayuk Datta, Ridhiman Ghosh, Suvik Porel, and Samadrita Mukherjee. Right. You may begin. Apologies for the mishap. Mics off. Abi next hoga. Ab pehle ham logon ne begin kiya tha. Jino logon ne kiya. Ab unko begin karne to ham baad hoga. Ab dhyan se dekho. You have to update. Ah. Switch on your mics, please. Uh, team, kindly start. Because <laughs> video. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I should record it along with my teammate Mayu Krishna, a divine host, and Samasika Mukherjee. Our present is the topic, our media has said it. Uh, excuse me, team. Apologies for interrupting, but you are not audible to us clearly. We can only hear your background noises. Kindly change your audio settings. Hello. Uh, I repeat, my apologies for interrupting, team, but uh, you are not audible to us at all. All we can hear is your background noise. Okay, uh, this is Shubhu Maisa here. Just a minute. Uh, we're having a little bit of laptop issue, so that's why uh, we face this issue. Okay, so uh, the students from the IP team, they are using my device. Okay. Now, uh, can you all hear the sound? Is it coming? Uh, I believe it's better. Uh, I want everyone to be muted. Everyone is muted. Okay. From your end, from your school also, it's, it's been muted. Can you hear me now? I am a man on the speaker. Hello. Yeah, it's absolutely right. Okay, fine. Fine. Just a minute. Good afternoon, my respected teachers and all the students present here. Here we are presenting Aditya Academy Senior Secondary. Today, I, Shovik Porel, along with my teammates Mayuk Datta, Ritiman Ghosh, and Samadrita Mukherjee, are presenting Relational Database Management System, that is RDBMS, and Structure Query Language, that is SQL. We are honored to have privilege to take part in this wonderful competition. So, let's go into the details of this topic. So, we start with transaction. So, what is the transaction? It is a set of operation used to perform logical units of work. A transaction is basically represents a change in the database due to some operations performed. We take an example. We draw money from ATM. There are two main forms of operations. That is read and write. What is a read? Read just reading the data in the database. And write? Write means doing some changes in the fetched data and storing it locally in the RAM. Now, we come to our main topic that is database management system, DBMS. It is a system software for creating and managing the databases. There are two parts of databases. There are two parts of databases, that is relational database management system and non-relational database management system. As an example for relational database management system, MySQL and SQL Server. And for non-relational database management system, it is HBase and MongoDB. From the, given table, from the given table, we can easily describe the difference between relational database management system and database management system, that is DBMS and RDMS. That is, DBMS stores the data as files our DMS data stores the data in the tabular form, non-relation between the data and the data is stored in the form of table which are related to each other. Now we comes to relation, tuple and attribute. A relation is a two-dimensional table. It contains a number of rows and columns. And the rows are also called as tuple, and the columns are also called as attributes. From the given picture, we can identify that what we can call rows and columns. And with that, we are also having their proper descriptions. Null values and the handling of null value. A null value with, a no, with no value is a field with no value. That is, null value do not having any, not null value not, is not having any values. There are two there are two main syntax for null value that is is null and not null that is given below and to represent a single trait of an object or concept 
in a specific place at a specific point of time a data item are the sub components of data object and represent the atomic state of an object or the concept with the given constraints so that we are also having some features a data item generally the in output uh, generally the generally the field uh, data items are generally the field values change 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 in this presentation we will be introducing you three major subtopics or three the number of tuples or rows in an relation is known as cardinality with that we are also having database integrity database integrity are of three parts that is entity integrity referential integrity and domain integrity change now we comes to types of relationship in rtbms there are generally four types of relationship that is one to one relationship one to many relationship many to one relationship and many to many relationship with that we are also having some features that indicates and also help us to understand this relationship in rdbms that is relation and database management systems now we comes to acid property acid property stands for atomicity consist change here is the flow chart of types of schedules there are generally two types of schedules uh, serial schedules and non serial schedules the non serial schedules have been that is serializable and non serializable schedules they are and serializable and non serializable schedules have also different divisions and that have been given with the help of flow chart normalization normalization is the process of organizing the data in the database normalization is used to minimize the redundancy from the relation or the set of relation it is also used to eliminate undesirable characteristics like update deletion etc there are generally five forms of normalization that is 1nf 2nf 3nf bcnf and 4nf and also 5nf now so now here we come to the second topic of our event that is structured query language so what does sql stands for sql stands for structured query language and which helps us to access and manipulate databases sql became a standard of the american national standards institute a in si in 1986 so in this slide we had also the list of the functions which sql can perform first function sql can execute queries against a database second one is sql can retrieve a data from a database third one is sql can insert records in a database fourth one is sql can update records in a database and so on so now we come to the crude operation in sql so crude operations have four acronyms in them first one is create in crude operation c is an acronym for create which means to add or insert data into the sql table the next one is read uh, in crude operations r is an acronym for read which means retrieving or fetching the data from the sql table third one is update which means making updates to the record present in the sql प्राइमरी <laughs> की The super key contains a set of attributes, including the primary key, which can uniquely identify any data row in the table. Fourth one is the composite key. If any single attribute of a table is not capable of being the key, that is, it cannot identify a row uniquely, then we combine two or more attributes to form a key. This is known as a composite key. Fourth one is secondary key. 
one only one of the candidate keys is selected as the primary key the rest of them are known as secondary keys last but not least is foreign key a foreign key is an attribute value in a table that acts as the primary key in another table so here are some queries on the sql so first one is creating a table named student with the uh, fields named as student id name marks as the attributes but the student id is the primary key second one is the inserting of the values in that table third query is based on the details of a, of obtaining as details of a student from the ever mentioned table fourth one is using the select command to get the details of the student who has obtained a marks more than 80 fifth one comes the aggregate functions which consist of the minimum maximum sum and average of the marks in a student marks table so it's for the, and the syntax for that function is select max in bracket we have to write marks for obtaining the maximum marks of the students and so on we have to uh follow the same steps to obtain minimum sum and average marks from the mentioned table sixth is the fi is finding the total number of customers from each country in the table customer id which is having the fields customer id customer name country by using the function group by seventh query is based on the uh, ordering the uh, data in descending order based on the marks obtained by the students the eighth eighth query is based on displaying the marks without decimal places and also displaying the remainder after dividing the marks by 3 and the square of the marks so here is the syntax for uh, obtaining this mentioned functions ninth query is based on displaying the names into capital letters So, um, we can also display the third letter, uh, last three letters of the name. <laughs> Tenth query is based on removing the ex. I tore from both the sides of the text. So here is the syntax for removing the extra spaces. Eleven and twelve is based on the function of obtaining date. of the uh, obtaining the day month date year and concatenating two tables from the database and so with this we come to the end of the presentation so thank you all thank for you having everyone. the patience of viewing our presentation thank you everyone thank you team your time used was 10 and a half minutes Now on the second week of Meera Modern School on the same subject of computer science and the same topic of my SQL. When I call out your name, team members, please raise your hands so that you may be easily identified. Arya, Sony. And the three are Vansh, Tandan, and Nitya. A very good afternoon, one and all. Are you here? We are here to present our presentation on my SQL. In this presentation, we will be covering three major sub topics, which are basics of database and my SQL, how to create and query a tables in my SQL, how to program a table. Before understanding my SQL, one should know what a database is. A database is an application storing an organized collection of data. It creates and processes the data. Database management systems are of two types: DBMS, which stands for Database Management System, and RDBMS, Relational Database Management Systems. Database RDB, DBMS stores data as RDBMS as interlinked data in tabular form. 
Some examples of DVM as include My SPL is an RDMS based um, RDMS based structured query language. It provides managing and manipulating data. In real life applications include e-commerce, analyzing satellite imagery, and many more. My SQL command types include PDL, DML, DCL, PCL. But how does it work? My SQL first creates a database that allows to build many tools to store and manipulate data. Second, clients make requests through the command prompt by using specific SQL queries. And finally, the server application responds to the requested expressions and produces the result on the client side. Rows are called tuples, while the number of tuples is called cardinality. Columns in MySQL are called attributes, and the number of attributes is called three. Data definition plays with the structure of table and includes commands such as create, alter, and drop. DML, data manipulation, which plays with the content of table, uses commands select, insert, update, and delete. DCL is data control language. It commands In my SQL, include int, tag, cat, var cat, and date. The examples and their uh, size parameters depend upon each and are mentioned in the presentation. The difference between var cat and cat includes that var cat is an abbreviation for variable character, whereas cat is an abbreviation for character. is not a programming language it is a query based language and it is not case sensitive one can write in any order in uppercase or in lowercase of your choice for creating databases in mysql we need to give the predefined command which is create database database name here the database is named as company now by using the database we have created a table named as employee which is defined by create table, table name, bracket, heading of the first column, its data type and the limit, comma, heading of the second column, its data type and its limit. And by further coding, we got this as an output. So this table contains seven rows and seven columns. For insertion of rows in this column, we write insert into table name values, round brackets and respective value to the columns. Now here are some queries for the given table. Display the details of all employees who are below the 30 years of age. Here we have selected star from employee, star defines that we have selected all the data from the table and age is less than 30. Question second, display the names of the employee working in North Zone. Here we have selected the name from employee, which is our table name, and where keyword is used and zone is equals to North. With the end of semicolon, we got this as an output. Question number three, display the salaries of the employee of department 10. Select salary from employee, 
where department is equal to 10 by semicolon we got this as an output question number 4 display the name of various zones from the table employee a zone name should not should appear once only select distinct the distinct keyword is used here it does not repeat the repeated value question number 5 display the various data department numbers from table employee a department number should be displayed once only select distinct department from employee question number 6 display the details of employee who are getting a salary of more than 35000 in department 30 here we have two conditions which are separated by and so we have selected star from employee where salary is greater than 35000 and department is 30 we got this as an an output. There are some more queries related to this table. The interesting fact is that if you want to not add a value to a, any column, you can simply write the name of the column and add values to it. And the column Now you have learned about MySQL database and how to manipulate data in it. Now what if we have to add these tables? To add these table, we have two types of joins, union and cross join. Union. It is a type of join that is applied to two tables A and B. Ready for union. There is difference between union and union all. If you use union all, then the two table is joined and all the values are showed in the There are certain conditions for union. First is that union contains row of sum of the rows of two tables. Column of A must be equal to number of columns of B. Table A contains two columns, table B contains two columns, hence table C has two columns. And the most important that the data type sequence should match in both tables. If first column of both table contains varchar, then the union Here's the example of union and union all. In first image, you can see that we have added two table, table 1 and table 2. And uh, table 1 union all table 2 is as follows. D is repeated in the new table. And in second image, one value of D is deleted from it. And it is a three union. table with each row of the second table. It is also known as the Cartesian join since it returns Cartesian product of the sets of the rows from the join table. Here's the query to form a cross join. Let's say we have to make a cross join of table A and table B. Number of rows in B, that is 12 rows, and number of columns in cross join will be equal to number of columns in A plus number of columns in B, which is 5. So, in the product, we get 12 rows and 5 columns, and each row of table 1 is connected to the each value of table 2, as we can see clearly. Now, to join two tables, the most important thing is for the primary key and foreign key, which develop a link between them. What is primary key? Primary key has always unique data. Primary key cannot have null value. A table can contain only one primary key constant. Here's the example of primary key. Foreign key, foreign key develop link between them. It uh, creating primary and foreign key. Let's furthermore learn about joins. What is a join? A join is a form by a combining of two tables, as we have learned before. Let's take two examples of tables. First table is customer that has primary key as company ID. 
an item table that has primary key as item number. So in customer table, the primary key is customer ID in item, it is item number. Here are a few queries. Let's say the first query is we have customer along with the item name that she has purchased. So we write the customer name and the item name from customers and we write the condition that customer item number is equal to item of item number. Here are a few examples of queries. We have to display all the items whose name is common to the customer name. Here are some type of join, natural join, inner join and the examples are here as follows. Thank you for listening us so patiently. Thank you. Uh, please uh, switch off your speaker. Yeah, Aditya Academy, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, uh, for such a nice presentation. Uh, Mira Motor School. Academy, am I audible? Just yes, yes, you sir. You're your audible. Uh, you're audible. Yes, sir. You're audible, sir. Audible. Can you hear us? Our voice? Am I audible, sir? Hello? Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you. I Actually, my speaker was on board. Uh, I think one of the girl has to leave because Rituparna, ma'am, our school is still 2.15. Uh, the van has come to pick them up. So, uh, Thea has left. So, I'll continue from here. Uh, thank you. Uh, both the groups presented very well. Now it is a uh, question uh, session. So uh, from the Python group of Mira Model School, I would like Ritu Parna ma'am to please uh, ask few, few questions. So uh, can we can we have some uh, any number of questions or uh, any fixed number of questions is there as we had a talk before? Yeah, ma'am, we can ask uh, one or two questions. I think that, that okay. Yes, sir. Two questions then uh, for each team. This Python team for Python team. I would like to ask two questions. Okay. Am I audible to the team members? Python team. Yes, ma'am. Python team, why are there? Uh, please raise your hands. Python team. Yes, Mira schools? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Fine. First of all, congratulations. You have done a great job. Uh, like uh, the presentation was very good. You have covered up the very basic of Python. Uh, the entire part almost is covered up. Uh, but uh, in few points, I would like to uh, talk on few points. Like the application part was, we can write, introduce few more slides on application part that would be more compact. Uh, from my point of view, it's so very good. That's why I'm telling you. Application part of this Python list and dictionary, if you can add few more slides, that will be more, you know, compact. Anyway, it's very nice. I would like to ask you a few questions. Like the first question is, as we had a talk on sorting of a list, right? We can sort a list. So normally if I use sort function, how it will get sorted? Ma'am, in the ascending order. Yes, sorry? I'm in ascending order. Ascending order. Can we make it in descending order? Yes, ma'am. So, if I want to make it in descending order sorting, how can we do that? Within the round brackets, we can mention reverse is equal to two. Correct. Very good. Okay. Another question will be, like, uh, we had a... The presentation was based on list and dictionary, right? Yes. So, what do you think? What is the very basic difference between a list and a dictionary? Um, a dictionary consists of a key value pair. However, in list, there are no key value pairs, they are single element entries. Yes, but uh, why? where the basic, basic concept lies? What is the difference actually? 
How do you operate means what is the operational concept lies? A list, a list can be also a list is ordered that has index. Uh, sorry, can you hear? It should be repeat. Can we hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Please continue. And can we repeat? Can we repeat the answer? Yes. Sure. Please repeat that. Square brackets and dictionary opens and ends with curly braces. Also, list has or indexes in ascending order, while a dictionary does not have indexes. And ma'am, the list is ordered, and the dictionary is unordered. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. I would like to talk to uh, Rajkumar Paul, sir. Sir. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Ritu Panna, ma'am. Good questions. So, uh, if uh, the team of Python from Aditya Academy, are you ready? Hello, sir. Hi, what is it to you, sir? Yeah. Uh, Aditya Academy, first, I congratulate you the way you created the PowerPoint. It was very impressive and I love the way you have, you know, related to the real world applications because Python has to do with all real world applications. It is an open source language. It has huge number of applications in various platforms. That is why it is so popular. So uh, with respect to application, I will ask you a question. What type of application we use dictionaries? Can you just give me one example where dictionary is the best, you know, use instead of list? Is my question clear, audible? No, sir. We just heard you. Uh, could you repeat your question okay. once? Okay, fine. Uh, you have uh, used uh, or displayed um, number of applications uh, through which you have explained list and dictionary. It was really very good and quite impressive. My question is, as per uh, the questions which you get on the C uh, means on the board paper, CBSC paper or your half yearly term one, term two related to dictionary, which type of question you will use dictionary to code can you give me one example okay sir uh, so we can use dictionaries when we have to basically uh, assign a particular value to uh, some element right uh, where we can make use of its key value uh, property for example if we have already done some calculations we, and we want to store those calculations and assign them a certain value so as not to redo them again in those types of questions, we can use dictionary, right? Fine. Means I, I am just uh, ask, was asking you, was thinking about an answer where you have got a question in your question paper. Means any question you can remember in your uh, 11th and 12th where you have used dictionary to answer that question. Any question, that question I need. The particular question. Yeah, any question. Okay. So, sir, there is this very common question with the students and the marks question that we have to tell that which student got the maximum marks where the student name is the key and the marks received is the value. So, in that way, we can compare that which student got the maximum marks and we can display its name. So, this is a very common question we get in our CB we might get in our CBSC paper and we do get it commonly in our term papers. Thank you, sir. Yeah, excellent. But uh, just one important thing we need to remember, name can be common, right? In a class, we can have, you know, 
two children with same names yes sir that uh, in that case numbers. We, roll numbers are common yeah known. yeah very good very good okay so one more question i'll ask uh, the python group uh, you somebody was you know uh, telling the inventor of python's name then the name was skipped can you please name the inventor of python language uh, guido one rosium or something like that i, I believe he was portuguese i think excellent and you, it is an open source uh, software so any any two characteristics of open source software well we know that uh, open source by definition uh, is means that the source code is public and anyone can view it as well as submit changes or patches to it and if the uh, like the owners of the repository acknowledge and uh, try to uh, like taking those packages uh, like sorry patches in the repository they will uh, like the person who submitted the patch their name will also get credited and it is a very um, how do i say wholesome and great way to develop software actually because we know that what software we are running we know the code behind it and we can also study and understand it and develop things further yes, so that the whole programming uh, community can develop as a community yes. that's Fine. one project fine fine very good very good thank you aditi academy you answered very well all thank the best you, for your board examination uh, now i think uh, ritu parna ma'am you can ask uh, two questions to the uh, my sql team of our school yes sir sure i will yes sir so, uh, my sql team from kida model school Uh, they are present here. Please raise your hands. Three of us are present. Yeah. Uh, one of us had to go. Yeah, yeah. Fine. As we have seen, like in MySQL, you we were we have discussed the data types. What type of data usually uh, we use in case of st data storage? So over there, you have mentioned wildcard and cat. Both the things. Uh, Yeah, I know. Like, what is what is the advantage of Varkar over Cat? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, I can explain this with an example. If uh, uh, we take a size uh, parameter size in Varkar, let's say twenty, and in Cat also twenty, then and in Varkar we write only three values, and in Cat in both cases we write three values. Then in care, it will require a uh, memory of twenty values only. But in where care, it will only occupy memory of three values, and the memory of seventeen uh, values is safe. So, so this is what is so what is the advantage in memory management? Uh, we can save our memory in where care, and uh, only memory that is consumed is uh, the values we have typed. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next is next question will be from joining. As you have mentioned, joining of tables. Now, joining of tables. In the case of joining, there can be one condition. There can be multiple conditions, right? Yes. Okay. So, if all the conditions are mandatory, or if all the conditions are not mandatory, like uh, it can be. any one or two of the conditions out of many so how will you deal with the situation like to make all of the conditions mandatory or not made it mandatory maybe one or two conditions are mandatory rest are optional how will you do that how do you manage this am i is my question clear to you uh, could you repeat it again yeah, sure sure i can same case of table joining when we are retrieving data from different tables right this data retrieval can be done based on different conditions now this conditions can be multiple correct so in a case when all the conditions are mandatory to be you know true then how will you manage the situation and if the condition some of the conditions are mandatory and some of the conditions are optional in that case how will you manage the situation in case in terms of sql All the conditions are mandatory, mandatory. So 
It is like if there are three conditions, more specifically, I am now telling you, if there are say three conditions, now if this all these three conditions are mandatory to become true, then how will you mention it in your query? And if all these three conditions are not mandatory to be true, maybe out of three, two conditions, you have to be, you know, it has to be because has to become true, and rest is optional. Then in that case, how will you manage? How will you mention? How did, how will you make the system understand these three conditions are I mean must be true. In that case only the query will get executed. One telling example, your question is not true. I didn't understand your question to our best kid. Okay. It is, you are not getting my question. Okay, fine. Something else I will ask. Uh, I will ask something else. Uh, okay, uh, there was a discussion on primary key, candidate key, those things, right? Super key. Okay, fine. So, if I think about, if I think that uh, picturally I want to represent the situation in case of a database table where there are sets of super keys, candidate keys, primary keys, as well as alternate keys. In case of a pictorial presentation, I want to present it. What will help you or how will you represent pictorially? I think there is a relation between super key, candidate key, primary key, alternate key, right? All they are related. So if I just want to present the picture Pictorially, I just want to present them. Like how this relationship is, how will you represent it? And you're asking the differences between all the keys. Like explain all the keys. Pictorially, how will you represent the uh, differences uh, we have got already from your presentation? Mom, there are alternate keys in a table. The, uh, I mean, the candidate keys which are eligible to be the primary key that are unique, which uh, they the candidate keys which are unique and which are not null, they be the primary keys, and the rest of the keys are alternate. Keys. Yes, okay. That means primary key is a subset of candidate key, right? Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Primary key is a subset of candidate key. Now, um, got the concept. Key. Now, so, uh, candidate key also is a subset of super key, right? Yes. So now you can draw the relationship pictorially very easily. It can be done. Yes. Right? yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Aira Motor School, uh, for your presentation and this question answer session. Now, over to Rajkumar Paulson, please. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Please uh, just um, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, children. Uh, now uh, I would like to ask two questions to Aditya Villa, my SQL group. There is a difference uh, which I found out is uh, the students who have spoken about my SQL are from computer science stream. And the students from your school who have spoken about MySQL uh, were from IP, I think. They, they are having informatics practices. 
So uh, yes, the sir. syllabus is little extended in IP in MyS MySQL, while in computer science it is little less. And there is a little difference. Anyways, so uh, coming to the Aditya Billa group, children, uh, can you tell me the difference between natural join and equi join? Children, am I audible? No, sir. Can you repeat the question? Yeah. My question is, uh, what is the difference between natural join and equi join in my SQL? Sir, sorry to interrupt. They have not done joining. I think their IP uh, students. I think joining is not done by them. Only this part. Okay. Anyways, I'll ask a different question. Uh, children, tell me. Uh, you have done primary keys, foreign keys, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Give me. Uh, you know, bus. Uh, what is the use of foreign key exactly? Set the key which is capable of being a primary key, but it is on displayed on the other table, is a foreign key. Okay. Now suppose in one table, roll number of a student is one table where roll number is the primary key. And there is another table, which is you know teacher table right yes sir and roll number is existing there also roll no so does this mean that roll no is the foreign key yes, sir. Yes, sir. Just looking at the heading, roll NO, can you say it is the foreign key or you need to, uh, you know, support with some other answer? Looking at the, looking at the key, it's not possible to uh, indicate that it's a foreign key. Then what exactly you look for? You can also indicate uh, student ID or teacher ID. Well, sir, we can also give student email ID because it is an unique ID for every each and every student. Yes, sir. Uh, do you I mean, sir, have you created a table with foreign key? Because then only you will be able to answer it. No, sir. No, sir. We have not created. Okay. We have just used the primary key. Okay, that means there is a difference in syllabus. Fine. fine. I'll come to some other question. Uh, tell me, what is the significance of null? N U L L. Sir, it is specially used for the fields which do not have a value in it. Sir, so null means that uh, thing that we have no value. Having no value is called value. A field with no value. Okay. Suppose I have a table. Okay, with four attributes, and now I want to enter a row with three attributes, and fourth one I don't want to give any value. What is the way I can insert a row in it where the fourth attribute I want to skip? I don't want to give any value, only three attributes I want to give value. Give me an example. So, can you repeat the question? Means a table has four columns, okay, four columns, right. And I want to insert one row in it, right? But I am aware of only three values, three column, three values. I am aware of it. Fourth one, I don't know. I want to skip that fourth value. How do I insert a value? Skipping one value, skipping means I don't want to, don't want to give any value to it. How do I do it? Give an example.
said the fourth value will be null. Yeah, fourth value I have to give give it null. Null means I don't want to give any value. You said na that no value. There is no value. Yeah, so then, then we, we will insert, insert only, only three, three in this in the table. How do you do it? We will not so give any values to the fourth column. Just I am I am reading it out. Just tell me whether I am correct or not. Insert into student. Student is the table. Then values. Then within bracket, I'll give only three values. Fourth one, I'll skip it. Is this the way through? Is this is this the right way? Suppose student table has four uh, values, right? Four attributes, four columns. Now I say insert into student values, then round bracket. I give my first value, I give my second value, I give my third value, and then round bracket closes. As you said, three values I have given. Is it correct or I am missing something? Sir, it is correct, sir. No, it is. Sir, it is correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I close uh, from my end. I think uh, Kashvi, can you please uh, carry forward? So this is our club's website. We would like to show it first. These are the testimonials and about us and a new team. We would like to share you the brochure as well in the WhatsApp. Also, I would like to thank the whole Aditya Academy senior from Kolkata and teacher in charge, Jitupanna Banerjee. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a wonderful evening. And Tech Club in charges, Ribu Saha, Satnik Sattar, Sadat, and the team A. Arvani Mukherjee, Anushka Roy, Mainat Dasgupta, Rajashi Roy, Team B, Mayur Datta, Ridhima Ghosh, Sovit Poral, Sam Samjitta Mukherjee, and your school principal, Sonali Sarkar. We would like to thank the whole team. This was an amazing event. And from our school, we would like to thank Rajkumar Pal, sir, our IT in charge, Team A, Ika, uh, our Tech Club in Charges, Ikadra Singh, Utkarsh Mitlani, and Thiya Dirotra. Team A, Chaitanya Palta, Kanish Verma, Pranita Tanmukela, Pranapreet Singh, and myself, Kashmi Arora. Team B, Arya Soni, Aditi R, Vansh Chandan, Nitya Verma. And our principal ma'am, Ms. Sadna Bella, and our deputy head, Minakshi Santana. Thank you so much for your cooperation. It was a great event and I loved it so much. Thank you. I would like to close up here.